Okay, so now we have terms, types, we have kinds, and kinds are also types. This is types, uh, types, this is exactly this. Okay, so, uh, and now let's uh, get to more interesting stuff. So we have terms, types, and kinds, and what can we can do with them? Uh, I'm going to the next file, I, I'm following this, uh, my plan, phantom types. I will open the file. Here is it. So let's look here. So this is uh, quite an old technique. We can use uh, type variables without actually referring to them in type definition itself. So I will show you several examples about temperatures, temperatures as we can uh, use in Haskell programs. So here uh, I have a type for storing temperatures and every temperature is stored as a double value here. And let's look at this definition. So type temp has an argument. It's some type variable, which is called unit, but it is never used on the right-hand side. Uh, just for convenience, I'm deriving here several uh, type classes. For example, num, so it's a number. So I want to operate over this double, just as if it's a double number. Or the temperature is a double number. This uh, deriving requires this extension, generalized type deriving. By the way, uh, chapter 12 is uh, uh, devoted to many sorts of uh, meta programming in Haskell, and it starts with the ways to derive instances. It started with a discussion how we can uh, derive types and uh, type instances in Haskell. So uh, we've derived these three type classes. Uh, and then we also have these two empty declarations. So we need these types only for referring to types. And we mean that F is Fahrenheit degrees and C is for Celsius degrees. And these types have no values. They are used at type level. This is the first feature of type level programming, actually. So these data types, they exist only at the level of types. We have no representatives for these types at the level of terms. So they exist on type level exclusively. And this is how we can use them. For example, here you can see two uh, values. One is uh, degrees in uh, Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit degrees, and another one is Celsius degrees, just two uh, almost random values. Uh, OK, so let's load here with my demo GHCI, this program. Uh, okay. Uh, is it possible to do something like that? So we want to subtract one temperature from another. They, these two values, they have different types. The first one is temp F, the second one is temp C. So types are different, and we clearly have a type error. So why do we use types here, this F and C? Well, we want to control uh, our values. While both values are double numbers, we want them to be of different types. So that's why we use uh, these uh, empty types here. So, well, that's an error. It's impossible to do that. But of course, if two values have the same type, we can uh, compute the results. So here it's zero. So uh, these two variables, it's just actually one variable. So it has some type, so we can do operations over it. So it works. 
All right. Uh, but of course, we can write conversion function. And just as we did it before, we can write it this way. It turns uh, Fahrenheit degrees to Celsius degrees. And we can look back to the GHCI and see, well, now it is possible. So we've converted it to the same type temp C, and now we can do subtraction and we can get a result. Okay. Unfortunately, with these uh, phantom types, we can get something like that. We can write nonsense definitions. And it works. So nonsense, well, temple, what does it mean, temple? We don't have such, such scale. And remember, this bool type, it is never used in the right-hand side of the type declaration. So, well, just nonsense. But uh, with these phantom types, we don't get control. Note, we can express an idea of having different scales for degrees. But we cannot check that user follows this idea correctly. So, of course, it can be used in the right way, but it also can be used in an incorrect way, just as here. Okay, so uh, this is uh, an idea of phantom types is very old. It is still used quite often in uh, modern Haskell li uh, libraries, but it's outdated. So, well, we're not supposed to use it now. So it is, there is no control at the level of types. We can express our ideas, but we cannot control them. Let's uh, look at something uh, more uh, interesting here. I will open another file. Proxies. This is an old, also an ancient technique. And uh, in this, uh, with this technique, we can uh, we'll use this module. It comes from base package. We don't have to load something specifically for it. Uh, and here, this uh, data type, it is already defined in this module data proxy. And you see that it uses phantom type in, in its definition. So we have a value now value which is called proxy and the type t is not used in that value and this declaration means that we use this type t only to this proxy type only to refer to some type at the level of types again there is only one value for any such type and uh, i will use it as follows so i have a class for unit names here with only one function, unit name. And this function takes an argument of type proxy u and it gets us back a string value. So I want to uh, get a string for unit name. Is it either Celsius or Fahrenheit or whatever? And here you can see two instances. So uh, this proxy type here is used to specify the particular type. If it's C, then the result is string C. If it's F, then the, the result is F. So let's look at this in GCI. Once again, this uh, demo program. Um, and I'm trying, uh, to create these proxies. So this is how I'm doing that. To call this unit name function, I have to give you a proxy, give a proxy as an argument. But what is proxy? Proxy is something unknown unless we specify a particular type. So if it's proxy f, then the result will be f. If it's uh, proxy C, then the result is C. So this value proxy is used to give us additional information about a particular type. And then we can use it here. Okay. So very simple type class, very simple instances, and we can use them 
to implement uh, this nice show instance for temperature. So look here at this instance. Um, so uh, this instance for unit name for the given temperature. So now we have uh, temperature as an argument to this type. And we refer to another instance with proxy. And in this proxy, we'll give a particular argument. So now it's a unit which comes from the unit type from the head of this instance. So unit name for a temperature uh, in uh, Celsius will be uh, C. For Fahrenheit, it will be Fahrenheit. Okay. Uh, so let's let's look uh, at how it works. So for example, paper burning it's uh, 4510 and let's look here. So we know that the type is uh, temp F. So that's why we've got here. So we show the double value. We show this degree symbol. And then we refer to the particular unit of this type. And then this also, this function is also called. And then we get back and it's it was F. As if it was F, we go to this instance. So we use this instance re resolution to get to the uh, right letter F here. Okay. By the way, there is one comment in the tweet chat. I know I only know HTML. Well, I know HTML either, but yeah, this is about Haskell. And uh, by the way, uh, I'm sorry if uh, I did not say that in the very beginning. All Haskell and Dev book is by no means a book for Haskell beginners. So no Haskell beginners here. It's uh, this book is advertised a second level book. So, well, I'm sorry, but it's uh, it may be a completely nonsense for everyone without Haskell background first. Okay, so this proxy techniques, technique is used here to uh, do something, well, very real to get uh, show instances. Okay, and um, uh, yeah, uh, and uh, I, I'll go further. I'll go further here. Uh, so let's look at this function. And these proxies, they are often used together with this code type variables GHC extension. And this extension is very, very simple. Uh, so let's, let's look here. So we have some type, which is polymorphic, which refers to the type variable u. And in order to call this unit name function, we want to refer to that u. So this scope type variable extension gives you two things. It allows you to write for all u in types first. And then it allows you to refer to this u here. So in some sense, it connects your terms with your types. So you have type u in type variable u in type annotation, type signature, and then you refer to it here in the type signature uh, right inside your body. So this is scope type variables. Just give you, it gives you an ability to refer to the type variables used in type signature. So we have this type, we construct proxy and we refer to it. And well, well it works, works here. And all this uh, instance resolution works at this moment. So we, uh, GC finds a specific instance for us. And for absolute zero, it works either. 